In this lesson, let's go ahead and get started by taking a look at our code and talking a little bit about something called a doc type. So I've opened my favorite HTML editor, which is Dreamweaver. I happen to be using Dreamweaver CS 5.5. And I'm in the Lesson 4 folder, and I've opened the file called index.html. So I want to show you a little bit about the very top of the code. One of the things I like about Dreamweaver is I have the ability to go into split mode. So if you aren't using Dreamweaver and you just are viewing the code, this is what it would look like. And that's OK. Just go to the very top line of the code. I'm using split mode so that I can actually see the design and see the code at the same time. But you can still get to it regardless of which HTML editor you're using. The very first line up here has an exclamation point and the words doc type HTML in angle brackets. That's called a doc type. In early versions of HTML, or hypertext markup language, it was very confusing and there were lots of different types of standards that weren't really formulated properly yet. So what we've got now is this little message at the top of our HTML documents that tells the browser what version of HTML we're using. Even though it just says doc type HTML, I know that it's HTML5, and let me show you where you can learn more about it or change it in your existing code. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm in Dreamweaver. I'm going to go up to Modify and go to Page Properties. And in here, on the Category side, if you go down this column right here and choose Title and Coding, it tells me right away that this is HTML5. So there are other ones under here that you can use, but for this particular lesson, we're using HTML5. If you were to open a brand new document, and I'm going to go up here and choose File New, or I could use the keyboard shortcut, which is Command N on a Mac, Control N on Windows, to open a brand new document, notice that Dreamweaver is giving me some options right over here under Doc Type to choose the kind of document I want to use. I'm choosing HTML5, and when I click Create, and go in and look at my code. There you can see is the doc type HTML tag at the very top here. You don't want anything in front of this. No word spaces or returns. This needs to be the very first thing in your code. Here I'm letting Dreamweaver do it for me. But if you're using an existing HTML file and you're changing it over to HTML5, you just want to make sure that there's nothing above it. That has to be the very first thing you see in the code. And that's a little bit about working with doc types and what the doc type for HTML5 looks like. In this lesson, let's go in and take a closer look at the different components that make up our blog, and then we'll go in and start working with it in our HTML editor. I've chosen a template from Adobe Dreamweaver, which is my HTML editor of choice. You can use whatever you like. But let's get started, first of all, by inspecting what the different components are that we're going to be working with. So this is what the finished blog looks like. You'll notice at the top, that's the header section. In this particular design, the nav bar is contained inside the header section. That's not always the case. Sometimes it's a separate bar underneath the header. Sometimes it's a vertical list on one side. In this particular case, we have a very simple nav bar that's appearing inside the header. The bottom of the screen is the footer, and this one also contains some links that we can use. On the left-hand side is a sidebar, and this one we're going to create using the new Aside tag in HTML5. And in the center is the main body of our page, and these are excerpts. So these are the blog posts, but it's only showing you a small portion of it. Just as if you were creating a newspaper. You don't want to show just one article on the front page, just in case somebody isn't interested in that article, they may not go further. So here we're showing four excerpts, and each one of these has a link that they can go to to click on to learn more about it. When someone clicks on that link, it takes them to a new page that has the entire blog post on it. So this is the basic layout that we're going to be working with, and we've got our header and footer tags, which are new in HTML5, as is the aside tag. So we'll be getting started working with this in HTML5.
In this lesson, let's take a closer look at our header and footer section of our web page. So I'm in the Lesson 4 folder, and I've opened index.html in my favorite HTML editor, which is Adobe Dreamweaver 5.5. You can use whichever one you want to use. One of the things I like about Dreamweaver, one of many things, is that I can choose to view just the code, or I can choose to view just the design, or I can choose to view it as a split view, which allows me to see the code and the design next to each other. And I have this vertical bar that I can drag, so if I'm concentrating more on the design, or now I want to see more of the code, I can just keep opening and closing this as I see fit. So just to review, at the top of our web page is the header section. In this particular case, it's got a simple nav bar. It has a graphic, it has a headline, and then it has a tagline underneath it, something like a subhead. And at the bottom of our page, the footer just contains a colored bar and a couple of links. So in HTML5, now everything for the header has to be enclosed within the header tag and everything for the footer has to be enclosed within the footer tag. Those are two new tags in HTML5. So I want to show you where those are in my code, and I could look for them on my own, but another thing that I can do is I can use the Find menu. So Command F for Find on the Mac, Control F for Find on Windows, or I can go under the Edit menu and grab it here. You want to make sure that this is set to source code, and one easy way to do that is to just simply make sure you're clicked in your source code. So when I go here to find and replace, it comes up with source code. I'm just going to simply type the word header and go to find next, and it finds the header tag for me in my code. So I can close this window. So here's my header tag, and all of the information that is required for the header is listed in here. For example, I have my list, which is my nav bar. I also have a graphic in here. I have a headline. And here is my end header tag as well. So this is what is new in HTML5, is that all of this information is contained within a tag called header. And I can find the same thing at the bottom of my page. Here's my footer. So it's set to have a particular color background, and then it also has the three different links in here, and here's my end footer tag. So when you're working with headers and footers in HTML5, that information is contained within the two new tags that we have to work with, the header tag and the footer tag. Let's talk a little bit in this lesson about posting to our blog. I'm in the Chapter 4 folder, and I've opened the file called index.html and britain.html. I'm in Dreamweaver, which is my HTML editor of choice. You can use whichever one you prefer. I want to talk to you a little bit about working with excerpts and working with posts. So in the Britain file, you'll see that it's the full post. So it's a full page that's dedicated to that particular story, which in this case is about the Britain Bridge. If you go to the home page, which is index.html, you'll see that four stories have started here with just a little section of each story. That's called an excerpt. Just as in a newspaper where you want to draw the reader in, you don't just run one story on the main page, you run a number of different stories, and hopefully one of those is going to be enough to attract your user. That's what we do here. In this particular template that I chose, there is space for four different stories and four different excerpts. So from this page for each individual story, for example, Britain.html, I can go in here and choose a section of text, copy and paste it into the excerpt area for that particular story. So when you're going in and adding posts to your blog, you would add, go in here, for example, if maybe this ran for one month and you want to go in and add new stories the next month, you would simply replace the photo by clicking on it, selecting it in your source code, and do the same with the text. Maybe select the text that you want from the other page that has the full story, and then just bring a few lines over and create your excerpt right here. It's very easy to go in and post to your blog, especially if you're using an HTML editor like Dreamweaver. One nice thing that it does is when you select an item, it highlights it in the code. So that makes it a lot easier. So that's how you can go in and add posts to your blog using HTML.
In this lesson, we're going to learn about the aside element, a new element in HTML5 for creating a sidebar-like piece of content. So I'm in my favorite HTML editor. I happen to be using Dreamweaver, and I've opened the chapter four lessons, and I have two files open, index.html and noaside.html. So in the one called index, which is our home page, I just want to show you when I previewed it, this is what it looks like. It's got that sidebar in it that is using the aside element. We're going to go to the other file called no aside, and we're going to add that content in. So the first thing you want to do is open a text program like Word or I'm on a Mac, I'm using text edit and open from the chapter four lessons, open the file called aside. It's just simply a text file and copy all of that text. So I'm selecting it and I'm using my keyboard shortcut. I'm on a Mac. Command C to copy on a Mac, Control C to copy on Windows. And then I'm going to go back to Dreamweaver and I'm going to the file called No Aside. And I'm looking over here in my line count and I'm going to the line 26 in that file. And right after the close header tag, I'm going to paste that content. So what it is, is it actually has, I pasted it in here and I'll show you what it is. It actually has the, um, the sidebar element already created for you so you don't have to go in and create it. So I'm gonna go in here and search for a side in my source code and show you that what it did, so this is where the last tag was before we pasted in. So it's gone in here and added all this content for you automatically. So I'm using a tag called the aside tag and it automatically is going to put the text in that sidebar category. And then when I'm finished, I've got the close aside. So I've gone in here and already put in all the information you need. It's got a header using the H3 tag. It's got an image. It happens to be my picture. You can obviously replace it with your own. Put in the correct width and height and then enter the information you want to be in the sidebar. And all the formatting is handled by the CSS. So I'm going to go in here and save this file and then preview it in my browser. And there you can see exactly what it looks like. So just to show you what it looked like before without having that sidebar on it, this is what it looked like before. This is what the original file looked like, the no aside file. And then after we add it, this is what it looks like. So it pushes it over to the left. These two uh, posting columns go to the right and we have a nice little sidebar and that was created using the aside element. In this exercise, we're going to learn about using lists in HTML5 documents. A list is an important component when you want to organize content. In this particular case, we're going to be using an ordered list, but there's also an unordered list. An ordered list has numbers in front of each item and an unordered list has bullets. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm in the lesson four folder and I'm in the file called trusses.html. You'll see that at the top here I have a subhead that's called Types of Trust Bridges and then I have a simple paragraph of text and I'm going right below that and in my code I've already entered for you the ordered list element and the end ordered list element and you want to simply add the items in between. So that's where we're going to start. I'm in Dreamweaver but if you're writing directly in the code just look for the ordered list element and you want to type right after that and just before the end ordered list element. So we're ready to begin. So I'm just going to start each particular item in the list has an LI element, a list item element, and then you have to end the list element at the end of the line. So let's get started. I'm going to do my open bracket LI to start an item and it's king post is the first one. And then I want to end that item. Go on to the next line and start another li element. And this one's going to be queen post. And then I want to end that one. And then the next one is going to be uh, long. And end that element. Start the next one. This one's going to be lattice truss. And again, I'm going to end that one. Go on to the next line and start another list item. And this one is Burr Arch. These are different types of truss construction designs for covered bridges, in case you were wondering. 
and the next one is how so another list item element and this one is how and then I want to end it go to the next item and this one is partridge and again I want to end that one and then two more uh, this one another list item and this one's going to be smith type 4 and that item okay and then the next one is um, McCallum and then I want to end that item so now that I've added all of those you see that I have my ordered list element then I have each of my items has a list item element and an end list item element and then at the very bottom I have my end ordered list element I'm going to save this and preview it in my browser go out and take a look and that's what it looks like. So each item has a number in front of it and that's called an ordered list. Now if I go back to Dreamweaver I can go back here and change this to an unordered list by simply changing the O to a U in both instances, save it and then go back and preview it again and now I have an unordered list and these just have bullets in front of them. So there are lots of reasons why you might want to use lists, but that's how you do it. So you simply make the decision of whether you want an ordered list, which puts the numbers in front of it, or an unordered list, which puts bullets in. And that's how we create a list in HTML5. In this lesson, let's talk about using tables within our HTML5 documents. When we first started building web pages, tables were an important component. We used them to create the layout of our web pages. So if you wanted images to appear next to text, or you wanted items to appear in a specific spot on your web page, that's what we used tables for, and they were very important in building early web pages. Now we use CSS or Cascading Style Sheets to build our layouts and our formatting in, so we don't use tables for that anymore. Tables can still be very useful and I want to give you a review of when to use them and when not to use them. So first of all, tables can be really important when you're trying to organize content. When you're displaying large amounts of data, such as a lot of numbers or percentages, things like that, that you want to put in columns and rows, that's when a table can be really useful. And for creating input forms, tables can still be used for that as well. When not to use tables? For laying out web pages, as I mentioned, you don't want the main structure of your pages to be created with tables. You want to build your pages with CSS, and then if you need to add a table here and there for structure of data, that's okay. Another thing to keep in mind is for search engine optimization, or SEO. If you're heavily into that, tables are not a good option for that. Tables have a lot of tags, and I'm going to show you more about that in just a few minutes. So it's really not a good idea to use tables, a lot of tables, if you're really looking for search engine optimization. What that means is that when you're searching for something in a browser such as Google, if I search for pet stores in San Jose and I get a listing of all the pet stores that come up, if I'm one of those pet store owners, obviously I want mine to be near the top of the list. If you're adding a lot of tables to your documents, it can slow things down and it can make your website appear lower on that list. So really not a good idea to use too many tables and the more complex tables you use the less successful your search engine optimization is going to be. Another thing to keep in mind is that for people who are using your web pages in a non-visual way such as people who are vision impaired if your website needs to be section 508 compliant then it's not a good idea to use a lot of tables because they're not really read very successfully in screen readers which visually impaired people use to interpret the content of your pages so those are just a few things to keep in mind that being said tables are still okay if you use them in small doses so let's take a look at some of the tags that we use in tables so this is just an overview. So the main tag that we use is the table tag. So here you'll see I have a value and an attribute. So this particular table has a border of one pixel. 
you can set up your tables to not have any border at all if you like but you can also go in here and add a border if you want here's my table head so if i want a table header at the very top i can indicate that but i always have to end it so notice that here's my table tag and here's my end table tag here's my table head and here's my end table head and then i have a table row so i have to end that table row and then for the actual content of the table we use the TD tag which stands for table data so this would be a column here I'm telling it to create a column and here's the text in that column and here I'm ending that column here's the second one the text in that one and here I'm ending that column and then finally my third column and my data that's going into that one and then I end that one as well and then we also want to end the row and then we end the table this believe it or not is a very simple table we can actually add other attributes to make it even more complex such as captions column groups we can add footers lots of different things that we can add but this is just a quick basic overview of working with tables now let me take you out and show you what it looks like in Dreamweaver I have a simple table set up here I'm using my favorite HTML editor, which is Adobe Dreamweaver. You can also build this in straight code if you wanted to. So in here, I've got my table set up so you can see that here's my table tag. This particular one has a border of one pixel. This one has a width put in. Dreamweaver automatically puts the width in for me. So this is my table header. It says wood used in covered bridges. And then I have two rows and three columns so I have several different types of wood listed in here and you can see that my table has a one pixel border around all the cells I also have gone in here in Dreamweaver it allows me to go in here and grab notice this little icon that I'm seeing when I'm in between two columns I can use this to actually go in here and make my table wider or narrower and Dreamweaver automatically goes in and enters the width of all of my columns for me so this is a very simple table that I have set up, but I just wanted to show you everything we just looked at in that other document in that PDF is here. So here is my table. Here is my end table. I have a table row. I have an end table row right here. And then I have my table data and my end table data. So it's very easy to set this up in straight code, but you can also do it very easily in Dreamweaver as well. And that's just a quick overview of working with tables in HTML5.